Hello, Prim friends. Well, I had promised that I was going to be doing some videos, some amazing primitive places, and this is one of my all-time, all-time favorites, because this is my parents' home. And I am so thankful that they were okay with me recording here. So this was my inspiration, I think, for why I love primitives. I know there's some people that grow up with antiques in their home and it's not their favorite thing, but it most definitely was mine. So my mom is a amazing rug hooker. And so a lot of these, all of these rugs actually, except for a couple that I'll point out and the reason why, um, these were all done by my mom. She's one of the fastest rug hookers I know. Now every little corner here, there's another little vignette all ready for Christmas. The little mice in the corner. The David T. Smith uh, grandfather clock has been customized to have an image of an older home that they had owned there on the face of the clock. If I remember right, that was Chris Woods painted that for them. Aww. And this is the office. My mom hooked that rug. Now normally she hooks in a very primitive style with wool strips that are about an eight or a nine, which is the width. And this one that um, my dad, I think, had fallen in love with that pattern when they were at solder one year. This one was a real challenge for my mom. It was a lot of twos and threes and I think fours in order to hook that just gorgeous. This little bench, uh, there's a story there. That's actually what started my mom rug hooking. I found that at a David T. Smith outdoor sale that he had one year in 1994 with several crafters, uh, early American style crafters. And Ramona Khan, who is a rug hooker, was there and had these pieces for sale. And I bought that for my mom for Christmas. And the friend that I was with at that, at that uh, outdoor sale had asked me if I would be willing to take a class with Ramona also. And I just, I wasn't really a big fan of taking classes, but that was an exception. And I did learn how to rug hook. And the very first rug that I did was of a thistle pattern. It was very special to me. And the rug ended up being um, in my first son's room. And his whole room was stenciled with the thistle design. And you might recognize somebody up there if you know me. My dad collects the leather-bound books. So there is a collection of those here. And one of them here somewhere was actually a book that was written by my five or six time great grandfather. So that was an amazing find in doing some historic research on our family. I'll show you this little, little piece here in the corner. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force and um, when I would go with him sometimes to the PX, we would admire, and I as a little girl would admire these mechanical bird cages. And the birds would actually move and sing. And let's see, there he goes. 
It was just such a sweet memory as a child, always of those trips to the PX with my dad. And we never, they never bought one while they were in Berlin, but several years ago, I found one and drove to Pennsylvania to pick it up very quickly after work before it was gone, after I had found it online. And that was a Christmas gift for my dad one year. The frame there actually had an early portrait in it. My parents bought it or got it from friends of theirs in Berlin, Germany. And it had a family portrait, not our family, but the other family portrait in it. And, you know, this was really before my mom was as, as much into the antiques. My mom has mentioned today that this is really the third rendition of their decorating style in their home. The first one, when they were living in Berlin, was very, very modern. Uh, it was a Danish modern. Uh, the the uh, finish on the furniture pieces was so shiny. It was like a mirror finish. You could practically put your makeup on um, in, the, in the finish. You could see yourself so clearly. So they went from that to the Colonial Williamsburg style and then the primitives. This tree is the first one always that goes up and this also goes up for the 4th of July. It is a real feather tree. It has these beautiful antique cigar feathers there too, or cigar patriotic pieces there in the feather tree. They, they look for when they're out and about at the antique shows and different places. They look for the red, white, and blue ornaments specifically for this tree. And there's a, another somebody that's very special to us in the military today. That's my son. So my dad was in the Air Force and now their grandson as well. And every little corner, again, another vignette on the rock I made, painted when I was a child. An old clock and a beautiful paper stamp there for embossing the paper with some sort of a symbol. I'm going to come out this way and we'll walk down down the hallway. There's a rug there. This lovely bench and the Santa mask is so special to me too because when I was a child my great-grandfather in Germany would put one of those on and just it was scary to me as a child, but um, that just had disintegrated over the many years, and so I was able to find one that was very similar. I think I found that on eBay one, one year and gifted it to my parents. We'll do the family room here at some point in a minute, but we'll go down this way. This is their wall of portraits. My parents at the top, myself and my brother in the middle as children, and then my parents' grandchildren below. The five at the bottom were all done by Wally Spatz, who was very, very well known in the Cleveland area as a silhouette artist. And she passed away many years ago. The ones of my parents were done by somebody that um, trained under, under her. I know sometimes the bathrooms don't end up on in the magazines, but if you're if you have a primitive home or an early American style home, you want to see the bathrooms in these magazines so that we know what we can maybe do to decorate here. There's a candle holder there in the corner. Again, another hooked rug and sweet Santa there. Not your traditional toilet paper holders either, or trash cans or, or crocs. I always love that 
rug there with the two sheep and the pedestal sink. We'll come this way in the master bedroom. And the buyers, the carolers. My parents had a wonderful builder when they were building, I think 18 or 20 years ago, um, that were fine with them doing some of the things in the home themselves because it wasn't something that, of course, they, the builder would normally do. My parents traveled to New England and found uh, the wood for the floors, the wide pine floors, and the special uh, cut nails came from a company that is the oldest, oldest nail company in the country, and those are from that company, which should be about 200 years old now. And she hooked that rug as well. The red linen bedding is from the Seraph. And the oatmeal color linens, are, those are from Ginny Curry's. They had the shutters, the shutters made for the house a few years ago. Of the, the early wig there. And the Violin was my grandfather's, my mom's dad. We got that when we were in Berlin a couple of years ago, actually in January of 2020. We brought it home, carried it through the airport and in carry-on. There was no way that was going to be going to be shipped. That is a precious family. Precious family piece. The colors you might notice on the trim. My parents had uh, the designers with Nancy Kalen come and help with the planning for this house when it was being built. This is the fourth house my parents had built. And this sweet little Sweet little one there. Again, family pictures, family memories. We have some family of our early family members that kept things and some that did not. So we are so thankful and blessed for the pieces that we do have. You see the mirror here. You maybe recall when I was so excited to find a mirror very similar to this in Seville Antiques. Well, you see where I get my taste in, in antiques. The, the uh, Nancy Kalen and her designers were very helpful to my parents as far as the placement of these early tin lights and where they would go. Here's a little collection of all the little early drugstore type things, the black wax, complexion cream, hush cream deodorant, just so sweet. All put together, all together in its little, the window over the, over the tub came from New England. And my mom, she is one of the most organized people I know. I, I, I don't even, it's not even, there isn't even a comparison there for me. Um, I know what I strive for, but I far from it. And she had the measurements with her for if she were to find a piece, and she knew exactly that it would fit. And sure enough, that old piece was as if it was made for there. The curtains also from Ginny Curry's. 
And another vanity and feather tree. And a little, little Santa and reindeer. My mom and dad do collect uh, ironstone pieces, but very specifically those that have the corn design. So you'll see in one of the other rooms, the dining room, just how many pieces over the years that they had collected. And you know, because it was something so very specific, the corn pieces it was sort of one of those things that when you found it, you grabbed it. The very first one that they bought was bought in Canada. We have on my dad's side of the family is it's Canadian, so we still have cousins there. And here's a view of the, the family room. We'll go this way here for a bit. Here's another beautiful hooked rug. This one's a big one. And this beautiful chimney cabinet that was from David T. Smith. We'll open this up. It is loaded with the Christmas Santa Clauses that every year for many years the pottery would have a special numbered wood fired Santa Claus that would come out and so for years and I think if I remember correctly, there were two different types. There were the painted type with the color, and then there were also the wood fired. I think if I remember right, my parents always had the same the same issue or issue number for those for their Santas. And as a rug hooker with the different seasons, some that are other seasonal hooked rugs are in a crock. Here and there, the mantle. And another beautiful rug there. And another Christmas vignette there. The deer are from Jenny Curry's shop, Curry's Antiques. This very large feather tree is from the twin sisters. But I think my parents have had that tree for more than 20 years. So sweet. The Santa they had bought many years ago at David T. Smith. We're not sure that that could possibly be one of the early Arnett's. They are not marked. This one is not marked, but it could very well be one of the early Arnett's. We're not sure. It would be awesome if somebody would comment. If you know if that is one. And a whole collection here of the Putz sheep. At Christmas time, it's accessorized with the bottle brush trees. That's so sweet. We we laugh as a family. This room is. The only really lighting is from the little accessory lights, the tin lights on the tables. My German grandmother, at night, uh, when it got late, when the sun went down in their apartment in Berlin, they wouldn't turn on lights necessarily in the family room or in their living room. So if you wanted to read, she would say to you, well, you wait till the morning. So we kind of laugh here in my mom's 
my mom and dad's family room that they don't quite say, just go ahead and read in the morning. They'll say, go in another room. You have to see. Because you might not necessarily be able to see here. So somewhere here on this tree also is, oh, yep, I see it, is the tradition of the German pickle. Now with our family, it was not... Um, for our area of Germany. It was not really a tradition that my mom had grown up with, but knowing that it is a German tradition, we've we've adopted that and included that in our family now. And it's always fun um, just adding that. My son and his girlfriend, we gifted them with a pickle. So their Christmas tree will be adorned with that as well. Here's another example of the light outside the door right here to the to my mom's hooking room. And more rugs, seasonal here or there that are tucked in crocs. The owls are special to us with what my son does in the Air Force and his his group, what they're known what they're known as. That one too could be an Arnett, we're not sure. It was really before we knew the name of that that Santa business that we were able to pick these up. Or my parents were able to get them. Hedgehogs are a big deal in Germany, and they were for us growing up always, so there's a little hedgehog there, and the, the elephant I made for my mom, and that was a gift one year, and again, another basket filled with, with hooked rugs from other, other seasons and holidays of the year. Here's a very large rug that she's working on right now that she has said several times is really stretching her color sense. It is just beautiful. Maybe my all-time favorite. They're all my favorite. In this corner here is such a... I love this table. It was really one of the first pieces I remember of a kind of an antique vibe going from the colonial style and my mom and I were at an auction and it was covered in newspaper I think it was glued onto it and that was really I I don't even think we could get it home in our car I think we had to borrow somebody else's car to be able to take it home yeah that we had that that table has quite a story Quite a story and that's what's so much fun about these pieces and collecting them because we remember we remember where they came from we remember how we found them maybe even how we rescued them and you know when you're a rug hooker and you do anything with sewing with your hands then You've got to have a little bit more of all those little sewing collections here as well. A whole jar of thimbles up there. And that beautiful, beautiful bunny that was handmade. And I think the company, or the, the crafter that made that, I want to say she was either in Dayton or Cincinnati. Just every corner, the detail. I found, Jim and I found the, the cat with the marbles in the eyes at an antique shop a few years ago. And we have one and we, we shared the other with my parents. The story with the marble eyes is that they are supposed to kind of 
scare predators away or, or things that would be outside. The, the animals outside would see the eyes in the window and would, would get scared and not come up close to the house. That's a chicken nesting box filled with future designs of hooked rugs. And when you're working on a rug as big as my mom is right now, then some of the wools are pulled from that special cabinet to go with all of that. I think that one is a Magdalena design. More sewing machine, sewing, yeah, little miniature sewing machines. Little singers, portables. And a whole bowl of baby shoes. Some of the necklaces that are made by friends of my mom's. That she'll slip on here and there when, when they're headed out. And again, more, more wool, more future art, just waiting to be chosen. And above the door here is such a treat. There's this lovely angel that they bought many years ago at Ginny Curry's. Oh, she's so sweet up there. We'll head this way. My mom also collects the stone fruit and I love adding pieces to it for her for Christmas gifts. Ladybugs are considered good luck in Germany and so I was so tickled to be able to find the ladybug for her one year. Half pieces are very rare and dear and so those are always fun to bring as a gift. So as well as being collectors of the corn ironstone they also collect the the corn yellowware. Candle molds above. And then this little vignette is fun. You see his little face in there? I made the Santa for her many years ago when I was a child. He's pretty good, if I say so myself. So he always gets this special place of honor here in this in this sieve. Well, my mom would joke always, well it is a joke for me, is I can do one. Somehow I have a problem making a second one of the same thing. It's just, I don't know, I think I lose my interest I guess. This lovely hearts from a heart mat. And another hooked rug. And the old phone and it does work so if it does ring we'll hear it here it's another bowl wooden bowl with more of the stone fruit some miniatures there Just every corner. This is a lifetime. I'd say a lifetime of collecting, but like I said, this is really their third design style. So these are very special in our family. On December 5th, which is when you should be watching this video, on December 5th, you put your boot outside of your bedroom door and St. Nicholas through the night would come and put some treats in your boot. 
Now, children who were good would get good treats. But children who were naughty would get switches and coal. And it would sort of be a last minute reminder that if they were not going to make their way right, Christmas was going to be pretty sparse for them. So that was always a tradition for us on December 5th, we would always put our, our shoes or a boot outside of our bedroom door and we would have candies and little little goodies and things in that. It was just such a fun, fun tradition and reminder of our German heritage growing up. We love the candy molds. I worked in a candy store. Uh, many years ago where they made the candy by hand. I was a teenager and my mom had as well. So this is maybe a tenth of the number of molds that they've had over the years, but they've, they've downsized that collection over the years. And coming around this way, there is a little collection there in that sieve of the chimney sweeps and the little pig. And those are also considered good luck in Germany. If you see a chimney sweep walking on the street, you are expected to go over and touch his, the cloth of his coat to get some of the, to get some of the ashes on you. That's considered good luck. So those are always fun, fun pieces to add to my mom's collection for Christmas. Laundry rooms also is a place, I think, in the magazines that we don't focus enough on because we have them in our homes, hopefully. And it is fun to see how people accessorize and decorate, decorate those rooms. A little fun granite ware piece up there. And here in the corner, the sink is covered with a noodle board and the old irons and the washboard and the sock dryer and of course decorated for Christmas there too with the with the bottle brush tree and here's one of the early rugs that my mom had had done in 1997, that was done with a kit. They changed out the countertops a year or two ago and went with the, the black granite with the leather, leather finish. It's just beautiful. And the collection there of the, the boards and the screens and a jar filled with cookie cutters, antique cookie cutters. For years and years we would bake gingerbread houses and for sure Christmas cookies. So it's just fun having those that little vignette here. One year when I was in sixth grade we had a fundraising event in order for us to go on a trip out of town. And my mom, I think she baked over 300 dozen cookies to help our class raise money for that event. Well, when she was done, we did, we ate out a lot during that time. And when she was all done after the 300 dozen cookies, their oven died. So my dad kind of jokes that he'd have been better off in the long run if he had just written a check to the <laughs> to the organization that was collecting the the funds. It would have been cheaper for him. So again, another fun memory. Fun memory growing up. It was a wonderful childhood having that family in Germany and our family here in the States and combining those 
combining some of those traditions. These are all pieces of corn iron stone. That one's unusual because it has some of the blue decoration added to it. But you can imagine the when I say your heart goes pitter pat, you can imagine that feeling when sometimes across the room or across even a fairgrounds, you can see as they're setting up or, or displayed, you recognize that, that finial on the top. And those are actually corn ice cream molds, which you don't see every day. We're going to go over this way. Let's see a very special Christmas tree here in a minute. Love the chandeliers. The bear in the center was my mom's brother, my uncle, in Germany. He does have a growler in him. He's over 70 years old and he's stuffed with hay or straw. He's just a treasure for our family. My mom told us about the sled that she had as a child. So when I found one one year that had the, the twist at the top, that was a Christmas gift for my mom. It wasn't the original, but it was bought to be a reminder of the one that was. And this tree is a memory tree that is filled with special little pieces. My dad's my dad's silver spoons he received as a as an infant when he was born. And those were mine. A Baroque pattern, my dad told me. And those were gifted to me as I was an infant by my uncle, who's there. My dad's father with my dad in that picture. My dad's silver cup. And the purple heart. that was bestowed upon my grandfather posthumously as he passed away in World War II. He was an American soldier in the army. My mom's parents there too. The pocket watch on the right was my, my mom's father and the pocket watch on the left was my great-grandfather on the American side. So there's so many little small pieces that are remembrances. My brother's little ankle tag from the time that he was born at 4.44 p.m. I tell you, there's that number pops up in my world so many times. And there you'll see the, the sugar cones, like what we were making in one of my other videos. And the sugar snips, because they are very hard. So they would have had to have something like that to be able to snip that sugar away. And the hunt board is a piece from, from David T. Smith. Many years ago. Okay, I'm going to head upstairs. That was one of the things that Nancy Kalen and her designers had suggested with my parents is that you choose one side of the house to paint the trim in one color and the other, the back side of the house, another color. So that's what they've done here. The lighting just outside of the doors before you enter. And then here is going up the stairs. So 
My mom is not a fan of live dogs, although we did have one when I was a child. A funny story with these dogs. They've collected these for many years. And in a previous home that they were in, thankfully the stairs actually, ironically, were shaped like a dog leg. And my parents had guests over overnight and their guest slipped. And as you go around the corner, then they become cats. The guest slipped on the carpet stair and came tumbling down the stairs. And as he came tumbling down the stairs, he somehow hooked a dog at the top. And so when he landed at the bottom, it was him in a heap with a whole bunch of those, with a whole bunch of those iron dogs. He was not hurt. Um, maybe his pride a little bit, but yeah, it, it was just one of those stories, you know, you just don't, you don't forget. So every time we go up the stairs, it's always, watch the dogs. There's a little, very special teddy bear to me, a little stife bear. I think he's a stife, maybe he's a Herman, I'm not sure exactly. It is not the actual one that was mine when I was little, but when I was a child, I had a little white bear. And that's me in Berlin, Germany with my little bear. And so when, when we would come and stay at my parents' house, this room, even though I didn't, hadn't really lived here or hadn't grown up here in this house, this was considered my room. That a creature was stirring, a little mouse. That's a Jane Curry, a little vignette there. Another feather tree. And a beautiful angel at the top. This, I'm not sure who made this little doll, but this is a funny one with our family, too. My oldest son just is not a fan of her. <laughs> he wasn't when he was growing up. So when the kids would be here at their grandparents, she would always find her way tucked in a closet because he was not a fan of her, and he did not like her watching him. So my parents would always find her somewhere. Not where she, not where she started. And heaven help you, there was no way they were going to sleep in this room if she was there. Another beautiful cabinet from David T. And there's these beautiful mice and angels in there that my parents had bought, gotten many years ago from a friend in Berlin, Germany. Oh, we'll head around the corner right here. There's a silhouette that was done of me when I was a child in school. And the little hook rug up on top, those are my son's handprints. I had started it, didn't finish it. My mom finished it. There's a wheat bowl. And these down here, if you don't know about these, you will now. So these were little, essentially like a, a gift certificate that a woman would give to her husband or boyfriend or father at Christmas time. And they would then go to the store that that was purchased from and they would buy or receive the hat that was chosen for them. And hats were very specific to your size. so. And inside of these, if I can open this, inside of these little boxes is a little plastic, yep, there it is. Inside of all of these is a little plastic hat. So if you ever see these little miniatures out and about, you will know what those were for. So this one, she bought 
her husband or someone special a Stetson hat and when he would go to the store to retrieve it he would bring that with him and there's one that was also a little set of shoes it just so sweet it just adds to the fact adds to the I don't know the design of it because they're all together and there's more than one because it's been so many years of them collecting those little pea pot there the rooms all have their own not used thankfully but they're there because historically they would have been photo of family actually the one the one seated in the middle may even be wearing that pocket watch that you saw on the memory tree downstairs. Here's a spinning wheel. I was with my dad when he bought this at an auction and they had a Corvette at that time and somehow or other, it was quite a, quite a feat, but somehow or other we managed to get that in the Corvette. Nobody there thought we were going to be able to do it, but we did. My mom hooked to that rug as well. And that one was quite an early one, she, she mentioned, because she had used quite a light white background there. And that's something she would just never do in those stars now. We know as rug hookers, um, if you've done it for a while or taken some classes, you don't want jet black and you don't want white white in your rugs. For some reason, design wise, it sucks the color out and it recedes. It does it with the white and it does it with the black. So you want those colors to be antiqued in order to, it's just much more appealing visually. So we'll go this way in this outer room. Another hooked rug here. My cabinet, if I remember right, that was also Data T that they had made. Another Santa, of course. I think what we'll end up doing is finishing here in this, this patriotic bedroom. Again, a collection of the of these pieces over time. Because as I've said before, you know, you wouldn't, I don't know anybody who would go out and buy a primitive antique collection all in one day. It's a way of life. It's the hunt for them. It's the collecting of them. It's traveling to other cities, other states. We've picked things up in Europe as well. It's collecting and buying them all over the world, really, and bringing them home for your collected look. And so when you see, when they see these pieces, it's not just a thing. The memory is also of where they got it, how they got it home. Maybe even what condition it was in when they got it. And then mixed along with family pieces. There's another old phone, the candlestick phone. That also works. You've heard the saying, sleep tight. Sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. Well, that is a rope tightener for the rope bed. And that's where that saying comes from, sleep tight, as opposed to sleeping in the bed loose and then you're sort of sleeping in a hammock. And another hook drug there that my mom did in that patriotic theme. 
I hope you're enjoying these videos. I hope you like and share. Most definitely subscribe. Ring the bell if you can see that. That tells you when the next video is uploaded. So you get a notification right away that it's there. There's the, the single crutch there, like Tiny Tim in the old Christmas story. Well, I hope you'll comment below. Tell me what you think. I love to hear from you. I answer every comment I have from the beginning and I will continue to do so. I just love hearing from you all on your journeys and your hunts for primitive antiques. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Keep hunting for these prim finds.